Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Azan Lebuyi Soshowe. Um, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, and comment down below if you guys want to know any more details about the topic we'll be talking about. So I'm starting a new series called Mindful Monday Chats with Zaza. As you guys can see, I have my first guest. Her name is Smongile Shawe, but she's my mother. Um, I don't know, how do I mean to address you? <laughs> Whatever way you're comfortable. Mam Shawe, <laughs> Smongile, I don't know, I'll see you when I flow. Um, so today's topic is focusing on anxiety in an African household, how to tackle that challenge, because you know how um, in an African household these topics are not spoken of, these topics are avoided, and emotions are suppressed in an African household because you don't have the I wouldn't say the confidence or the platform to talk yeah you don't have the platform to talk about it because it's just ignored that's <laughs> right Mom, please tell us more about yourself and your profession uh, I am an occupational therapist who works in the field in mental health and um, I am a mother of three including Azande so basically mental health is my uh, my passion anything that has got to do with the mind anything that has got to do with the human behavior anything that has got to do with just a person in general that's where my interest is and that's where i spend most of my time engaging and that's where basically i get my source of income as well <laughs> through mental health um so you said your profession is an occupational therapist could you please elaborate on what an occupational therapist is and what role they actually play in the mental health sector? Okay, an occupational therapist uh, forms a part of a multidisciplinary team where basically in mental health the main purpose is for rehabilitation so that uh, the specific affected individual mm -hmm. can go back into their activities of daily living and to be able to perform the way they used to prior any disorder that affected them. Okay, that's very interesting. She is a graduate from Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> but I should just spill it there. Um, so today, as I said, our topic is anxiety. So Mom Song Shomi, could you please tell us what anxiety is and how can one treat anxiety if you feel like a bit anxious and you have di you have been diagnosed or self-diagnosed yourself with anxiety? Uh, actually, anxiety is excessive worry and a fear that you don't have the origin in terms of where does it come from. And this fear or this worry affects your daily living. So that's when we will say you are having an anxiety disorder. The minute your activities of daily living get affected, because um, all of us we do have got anxiety, and the reason we have anxiety is because anxiety is good, anxiety is bad. And when I say anxiety is good, anxiety pushes us to achieve the specific goals that we have actually set for ourselves. When anxiety is bad is when you can no longer perform. I will make an example of um, if you are always fearful to stand in front of people for a presentation and you are employed in a job where you need to give a boardroom presentation, then that is a problem because it's beginning to affect your performance. But on a positive note, the same scenario, if I have to go and give a presentation in a, in a boardroom setup, is going to push me to go all out to research and be able to come up with a beautiful uh, presentation. So in these two scenarios, you see the good and the bad of anxiety. Okay, so could you elaborate on how like there are different types of anxiety? Like, you know people like suffer in different platforms, like either in the social space, um, can you like explain more like the different types of anxieties that are actually there um, right now? Okay, there are five uh, common uh, type of anxieties that I can just uh, say to you guys. Firstly is phobias, is, is just being fearful. You know, you find others that they've got a fear of being in enclosed places, like they are afraid to be in a lift. Mm -hmm. Others, they are afraid to, to be on a flight. Then you've got what is called generalized anxiety disorder. And then we've got as well social phobias, where is the fear of going to any social, social gathering. You find other anxiety disorders, which are the panic attacks. 
uh, they normally disguise because one cannot really pick up but you get this excessive panic attacks that you don't know the origin where they're coming from and then you've got the obsessive compulsive uh, uh, disorders as well they fall under the category of anxiety okay that's very interesting so you know how with anxiety and you stay in an african household it's not spoken of you your family doesn't like acknowledge any mental illness um, can you elaborate on the African stigma towards mental health and how can someone break it down to a parent if I am diagnosed with anxiety or I've self-diagnosed myself with anxiety? How can you break that African stigma and be able to talk about, because these are topics that need to be spoken about in a household. You can't just dismiss people's emotions. So can you just let us know about the African stigma behind it? I think before I answer that question, we first need to attend to the symptoms. What, 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 when we say we are having an anxiety or when you are about to diagnose yourself with anxiety, mm -hmm. you need to be able to first know what are the symptoms. And one thing that you need to remember, all of you viewers out there, is a diagnosis is not only made on one symptom of all the list. There is, a, a, we call it a DSM-5, it's Diagnostic Manual for Classification, where for you to be given that diagnosis or for you to say, I suffer from anxiety, you should present at least with a minimum of three of the symptoms. So if you only present with one symptom, it's not really a red light per se, but you need to look at the other things. So symptoms actually that um, anxiety disorder related, it's palpitations, things like you lose your concentration, things that you, 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 you sweat excessively for, for, for no reason if you are going to confront that specific event or confront a specific person. You, you sometimes struggle to sleep at night, your, your, your night gets disturbed. You've got these racing thoughts that you have and, and these unwanted thoughts. So you've got all these things that are actually kind of like abnormal to you. You become so restless, you become irritable. Now going into a household, you know in the South African context that mental health holds a big stigma, not only with anxiety. And unfortunately, anxiety is one out of a thousand probably where people will suffer from anxiety unlike the clear visible mental illnesses so first of all my advice would be firstly check on the signs that you have yourself what are the signs and look as well as when do you often get the signs i'll make an example with myself i have cut down on taking coffee which coffee is a um, high sedative or has got high caffeine because i discovered that i was getting this un unwanted stress, unwanted fear, and I will literally hear my heart beat so fast. So I had to first analyze in terms of what are the things in me that are actually a cause of this anxious pain. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know your emotions, if you don't know what irritates you, if you don't know what makes you sad or makes you happy, it's easy to misdiagnose yourself and say anxiety so most of teenagers and young adults find themselves struggling with actually identifying if they've got anxiety or not because they don't look at the food that they take because food plays a big role in the outcome of your of your emotions so i will say firstly check on what goes in your mouth check on in your environment what is the trigger in your environment and at home in particular, you find that your mom is a very obsessive compulsive person who always wants to find the kitchen clean and you know that it's four o'clock, your mom is coming home and you will begin to get this fear for the reason that your mom is coming home and the kitchen is not clean and the first thing that she's going to do is to shout at you. So you can actually eliminate that trigger because you already know that at home, this is what the others are feeling around me. Eliminate that trigger by doing that, by cleaning the kitchen before your mom comes, because in that way, your anxiety levels will, will actually uh, uh, go down. And if you have self-diagnosed yourself, my advice would be to first consult a, 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 a GP, because they'll have to do some medical tests to rule out certain medical related conditions remember i said some of the symptoms it's excessive sweating palpitations you you kind of like feel like someone who is having a, a heart attack mm -hmm. so that needs to be ruled out before you can be 
diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Because I can say I'm having anxiety disorder while I'm having a heart problem that is developing. Or I'm having, um, my, my, my sweat glands are overproducing, hence I'm overly sweating. I'm not sleeping at night because I've got an underlying a, a depression. So all these things, they are interlinked. So you can't necessarily say, I'm suffering from anxiety. It should be after all the tests have been done to rule out any related a, a, a mechanism. Because remember, we've got an organ in our system, which is the thyroid. And the thyroid is our mood regulator. So if your thyroid is not functioning, it might give a, 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 a mimic of an anxiety. It might give a mimic of depression. So hence, it's important that all medical assessment is done prior you can be confirmed with anxiety. I know it's difficult in an African household to tell your parents that you're suffering from anxiety. My advice would be most of you, as Anders viewers, you do go to the doctors without us parents knowing. We only see with the medical aid bill when it goes ching ching that someone has, has been, used yeah, it. someone has used it. So my advice would be if you are afraid to actually speak directly to your parents, ask your healthcare practitioner to actually invite them in so that they explain to them what is it because not every black household in particular has got an understanding of mental illness, has got an understanding with all the disorders that are part of mental illness because anxiety will be seen as a, no, you are just too fearful, why do you worry, you are a young, you're a young person, you are a young person, you are adversity, we give you pocket money, we do this for you, you don't lack, so what worries you? And, and, and we are at, at, at fault as parents sometimes because we think it's only us who wake up in the morning to go and make ends meet mm -hmm. for you guys to, to have the type of lifestyles that you're all living wherever you are. But forgetting that you also have got your own stresses that are actually in line with where you are. I'm just thinking of my mind right now. When being a young person, you can be stressed by issues of boyfriends. And that can actually bring anxiety on you okay. for the fact that, you know, my friends have been going out probably on the second or the third date and you have never been asked out on a date. And when that one particular guy tries and approaches you, you literally get so stressed. You are stressed by the fact that you, are, you, you, you don't know what to dress, what to expect. So that can be a stressor. That can bring an anxiety related matters. Okay, so we had a few questions on Instagram because I have an uh, Instagram ask me thing. So on that note, please follow me on every social media platform to keep um, on the lookout for what topic will be released on Mondays. So I got a question saying, is it normal to feel pain when having breathing problems? That's how I got diagnosed with anxiety. But I don't have any medication to help when I experience the pain. Okay, on that, remember on the symptoms, that is a symptom mm -hmm. of anxiety. And after every medical uh, test was done, mm -hmm. they could not link that breathing problem with any medical condition. And she was diagnosed with uh, anxiety disorder. She might not have been given medication because it's not a symptom that it's at a phase where you need medication. Instead, you are given um, techniques of how you cope with that breathing a, a, a phase when it comes you'll be given things like when you feel that um, time that you are losing your breath you need to breathe in slowly and breathe out and count reverse so those are type of exercises that you will be given not every anxiety disorder you need medication okay and then the next question for you mom Shonga, is why does the inner you just come out on random days and make you feel not worthy? So why does my inner self, like my inner voice, come out on random days and overpower my thoughts and make me feel like I'm actually not worthy? That could be like a link to suicidal thought to an extent because you, you don't feel like you're worthy enough to even continue living or do your daily things. I think uh, what is very important with the inner you is to first know who you are is an issue of an identity because the inner you will come out if you have not established who you are 
if you have not established in terms of what goes around me does not uh, identify me, what goes around me does not uh, 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 give a description of who I am. So the inner you will come out if you have not mastered who you are. And it, it, it's bound to come out in all circumstances. It can come out because you've got a suppressing or a subconscious thing that is stressing you, but you are not dealing with it. And as a result, it will come out at a time that you are not actually thinking about it. I will, I will make an example in terms of um, when, especially for girls, when it's that time of the month where your emotions are, are going K-wire, 99% of the time you are bound to have that inner you coming out because of the hormonal imbalance. But that you already know because you have you would have studied in terms of what happens prior that time of the month in my system, in my body, in me, so that when that time of the month comes, I already have developed coping mechanisms mm. to be able to deal with the inner you that comes out unexpectedly. So the inner you basically comes out through triggers. Through like triggers, like yes. Subconscious triggers that you're actually like suppressing in your mind and not thinking about at the time. Mm. So another question we got is, how do you deal with stress and anxiety in this time of a pandemic? where everything is uncertain? Um, unfortunately, the pandemic affects everyone. Mm. Unfortunately, the pandemic is right here with us. We have a choice to make. The choice is to either live a day, a minute as it comes, and not stress about tomorrow, because tomorrow is not yet there. And don't look at what you could not do yesterday, because yesterday is gone. So all of us, this pandemic, my advice would be take a day at a time. I know some of you are busy with online studies, something that you are not familiar with, you know, and it is stressful to you. It is stressful to your parents. It's bound to bring anxiety because you are probably being stressed by the fact that you cannot go to your supervisor's office for clarity. You are sending emails to them and they are not responding. My advice would be during this time of pandemic, try to find something. The minute you realize that I'm, I'm pushing towards this edge of worrying excessively, go out on an exercise. Just take a walk. Give yourself a 10 minutes break and just shut off. Because if you try to push to achieve what uh, uh, the expectations at the university is, most of the time is you might not even be productive. So you need to find things that you can just distract yourself, but with limitation and say, I'm just taking a 10 minutes break. And in that 10 minutes break, do something that might be creative to you. Either sit under the tree and just shut off your eyes and, and, and just allow the breeze of that environment to consume you. Okay, thank you so much, Mom Shongwe. The next, um, it's not a question, but rather like someone seeking advice on how she should go about with the condition that she has. So I'm going to read the DM. I won't mention the name. So this message says, but then parents are not the same, especially in black households. Some understand situations better and some would rather avoid it. Yes, we can talk about anxiety and depression, but how, but do they know what it is themselves? I suffer from anxiety and it affects my mental state a lot. I get very emotional, but I'm always accused of acting like an abused child or I have moods or I just don't like them and I'd rather be elsewhere. That is never the issue. They are quick to diagnose other people and give them advice on how they should see psychologists. As old as I am, I'm never able to make my own decisions. I never get asked about how I feel. I would describe myself as a yes man. In everything that goes on at home, despite how I feel about it, in most black households, the word sorry does not exist. How do you deal with being offended and having um, how do you deal with being offended and having to accept the apology you never received at all in the name of peace and moving on without bottling anything up? I think with this message, it's a cry out for help. My advice would be to visit a clinical psychologist for her to be a mediator in terms of being able to break the news to the family and to as well educate the family in how to support you. Because um, most parents 
even looking at myself, it's not easy to understand mm -hmm. that your child is depressed because the um, majority of the kids, you stay in suburbs. So there is no parent who actually will understand when you say you are depressed because the first question would be, what has depressed you? And most African families, the, the name depression and the name anxiety does not exist in the vocabulary. It's, it's actually one of those things that um, in mental health, we still have got a lot of work to do in reaching out mm -hmm. to black families to begin to understand that mental health related matters is not only running around naked, is not only eating in the dustbin, is not only standing in the middle of the road and disrupt, disrupting tra traffic. Because when we speak of mental illness, people immediately think of you have gone crazy. I wouldn't say that because a mental illness is when you are disturbed mentally. So once your emotions are, are already disturbed, like in this case of, of, of this message, I would advise that you either get a best friend who will actually accompany you to the doctor. But um, what is key is you need to get psychological help. And speaking to your parents is not actually going to help you as an individual alone. You need a mediator. And that mediator is someone who will be able to educate your family and for them because you might find that, yes, indeed, honestly, they do not understand. They think you're acting up while they need to find out exactly who you are because chances are they've not discovered who you are. They think they know you because sometimes as parents, we think we know our kids and we do not. Wow, that is very fruitful and that's like a lot to take in and a lot to digest as a person. Um, Mom Shawe, thank you so much for coming to my YouTube channel and having the viewers understand what anxiety is and how to deal with it in your African household. Um, next week, we'll be having another topic with a different face. But thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is my mother, my occupational therapist, you know, my yonki and um, But <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Like the video. Please share it. There's someone out there that actually needs this help. And this video could actually touch so many lives. Um, thank you so much. My name is Azanda Shonga once again. Thanks for coming through. Bye. Bye.